Oh, let's show our love once more. Let's show, let's show our love. Let's show our love. Wow, wow, wow. Really, the Psalms, they speak to us. In the cross is our glory. Why? Because the cross is the bridge. The cross is the bridge so that you don't fall into the pit. Without the cross, you will fall into the pit. And even if you fall into the pit, the cross will be a ladder to bring you up. Hallelujah! This morning, we're going to be blessed. This is one of the days, but today has a different name. We call it a Good Friday. So it means that Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But for today, because it is called a Good Friday, oh, you will see the goodness of God in this day. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you read Psalm 69, verse 9, in the New Living Translation, Bible says, Passion of God's house has consumed me. The man I am about to introduce passion for God's house has consumed this man. He is so committed to the things of God and to God's business that we sometimes call him general. He is everywhere and you can trust that whatever you hand over for him to do, expect that he will do it well. And sometimes he comes through by military kind of action. So the general is not only about the fact that he can do all things, but sometimes the approach is that I want it in this order, perfect and that kind. Help me welcome Bishop Amon Nikwe as he takes us through this morning's On the Cross. Hallelujah. Amen. I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate. And let's get out of the mood of mourning. I appreciate, I appreciate. Yeah, day, day, yeah, day, day. Yeah, day, day. Amen. Shall we take our seats in heavenly places? Mama Yentinas is Amen. Amen. There, there is a... A, a tendency that we would resolve into tradition. And I'm beginning to see because we usually try to relate today to a funeral because Christ has died. But I don't think if it's that synonymous or it has that relationship, it will be called a Good Friday. So get out of yourself. One way, yeah. What a yes, who will know Edano ever to talk a year your home. It is a one here, your home for dear, any and kick and hono, or won't see a beca quashad to now. Mean ye need, sir, a beer, sir, a your wood down quan cotendia, and cabia, and Kayam Freno, if he had a pa. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. Amen. I stand upon the exalted altar and I covet the blessings and anointing that goes with it. Amen. Grant me the boldness, O oh Lord, Amen. and speak through me for the sake of the cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, I'm speaking on a theme. Before I announce the theme, I, I was following the hymns. Now, and, and in one of the stanzas, I said, near the cross, I will watch and wait. What's it? Now send you an home and I'm a way na my train. Hoping trusting ever. Me nya ni da so na me ji di da same train. Till I reach the golden strand. Cause he say, me kwa kodru sika. And the significant thing of I say just beyond the river. Was he one sutini na no na. The Bible said, they that wait upon their Lord. 
They shall be strong. And they will do exploits. So, so, so you realize that just beyond the river, there is the golden strand. So our waiting upon the Lord, I would say is more obligation than a choice. You know that two hymns are enough message for us to go home. Hallelujah. Amen. If I don't think I'll dwell more on the hymns, I, I, I flow a lot with hymns. Today we are speaking on what I term death, the reason for Jesus' death. Death to us as believers. Where does death come in? And how do we get rid of death? And how does death determine our work? So if we are waiting to get just beyond the river for the golden strand, what can death do to us? To us. I want to bring out some identified seven controversies. Seven controversies, slide number three. That has a tendency to pull us back. If we are not able to appreciate these things, then we cannot wait. And the first and foremost, as to do with the life of Jesus, his life was full of miracles. He was forgiven. He also worked in authority. And these were issues that could not easily be accepted when he was, he was alive. His message up to today we are still fighting to push his message across. So these are issues that are controversial to the heart that don't believe. And that is what is making the Christendom Quite a challenge for a lot of people to remain. But our message is also very hopeful. The next is his death. The reason why we are standing and sitting here today. You know, all men die. And even dying on the cross. It was not only Jesus, and it wasn't even the first person. And it wasn't the last person. But death on the cross was a culture as at the time. The Romans found it very easier to hang people on the cross. And another issue is what he delivered, what he left with for us. That is his message. The message is left for us. It becomes so difficult to push across. But you know, in the book of Acts, chapter 19, when the seven sons of Skiva, they were using all manner of means. To control in the city. Apostle Paul went there and he opened their eyes to scriptures. And in verse number 20 of Acts chapter 19, the Bible so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. It prevailed. So, whatever my men thought or never, whatever. Perception men have can never stop the spread of the word of God. The next service is burial. His burial was equally a controversial thing 
With all manner of arguments around it. His resurrection also become an issue. How can somebody who has been declared death, buried after three days, rise again? To the extent that soldiers were put at the entrance of his tomb. And lastly, his return. What I speak to you today was spoken to Peter, he was spoken to Paul, he was spoken to them that Jesus was to return. And today I stand here telling you that there is something a day that Jesus will return. What, what a controversy. For how long is he going to come? Hallelujah. Amen. But the hymnal told us. The hymnal told us in verse 4 of the second one, he said, Near the cross, I will watch and wait. I will watch and wait. That is the only way we can give flesh to this point of his return. But Paul sold the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 7 and 8, but see, we speak, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto glory. You see, the word unto our glory. In the next verse 8, it said, But which none of the princes of this world knew. If you follow the teachings of the presiding bishop, you know which prince we are speaking about. The rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness. They were the princes. If they had known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known that Jesus was going to be more lever than when he was alive, they wouldn't have crucified him. So the reason for his return is the ultimate result of disobedience. It was a pure disobedience. That man, man was disobedient to God. You know, God wanted conformity. Because when, when they gathered, he said, let us make man. And at that point that the angels of heaven have rebelled. Jesus, God has become disappointed. And he said, how do I get a replica of my intention? Well, if you listen to the executive pastor on, on Wednesday, he said, and, and God planted a garden. And he put man there. Because he has an intention. You know, God decided to do that because man has been formed above the angels. He has privileges more than the angels. He has a better instinct. And he's capable of performing reasonable services. Even when you compare man to the beast in the garden. There were a lot of things man could do that the beast could not do. So God saw that it was good to put man there. He had already declared in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 
that everything that he created he observed and he looked and it was good so at this point of scripture no evil has visited there is no evil so man said I live here. And God said, let me set the rules straight. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, it said, and God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat. But the tree of knowledge and of good and evil thou shalt not eat it for the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die so death was introduced by God not Satan the first time ever death was found in scriptures it was God who pronounced it so death was not supposed to be a weapon for the devil to scare us from existence the day that you eat you will surely die and, and you see when God speaks he doesn't go back on his word God does not speak and say let me go back and think through and come again so, so the liberty that was granted man he violated it he had the opportunity to eat every tree from every tree except one condition that don't touch this for the day that you touch it you will surely die hallelujah amen and God will ensure that man will die because he has spoken it and he will never go back on his word. Amen. So any violation of the directives of God will result in a death of a kind. The ultimate result of disobedience is rebellion against God's intention. It's rebellion. And God pronounced the impact of that rebellion as death which must come upon man. You see, sin always takes a man from his location. Anytime you sin, whether in the church, in the house, wherever you sin, you move away, you drift away from your known position. Because you are known that this is your location. So after Adam and Eve have disobeyed, and that is what the hymnal said, the raptured soul. Their soul got raptured. Hallelujah. And so he called, he came and he called Adam, Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? And God knew the geographical location of Adam. He knew. God knew that Adam was in the garden. He knew. But because Adam has violated his rule, Adam has disconnected what is between him and God. So where God was to find Adam, he was not there. Adam was out of coverage area. It's just like you having your phone. And any time you put off your phone or you are in an area where service is not good, where somebody calls, it doesn't come through. And this is what happened in the garden when God came. Where are you, Adam? He's out of coverage area. Though he was in the garden. So, brother, we can bound to find ourselves within the brethren. But it depends on who we are. Is God connecting to us? Hallelujah. Amen. And that is a significant thing 
we must be very mindful of. The first time death was mentioned, it was mentioned by God. But when God created death, death didn't have the power to kill. It's just like all other things that God has created. It was good. Until somebody operationalize it. And de depend on how it comes. It comes with its impact. He said, the day that you eat of this to you, will surely die. God, death was there. And there is nothing wrong with death. Death can be any other thing in the garden. Hallelujah. Amen. But when Adam disobeyed, he gave life to death. Any time we walk in disobedience, we trigger death in our lives. Adam gave life to death when he became disobedient to what instruction God had given in the garden. Because for as long as he remained, death was just in the other creation there was nothing around death until he disobeyed hallelujah you know when you look at where we stand as believers and the concept of our understanding we can categorize death into about three stages or batches. What happened in the garden between Adam and God was a type of death. But it wasn't a physical death. It was an eternal connection between God and man that was cut off. Because what will give us eternal life with the Lord has been withdrawn. So we have the, a death which is the Holy Spirit from departure of the Holy Spirit from the spirit of man. And we have the battle of man from the presence of God. And the battle of the spirit of man from his physical body. The departure of the spirit of man from his physical body is what we call the physical death that, that, that pervades with us now. But there are other deaths that disconnect us from God. So you realize that the earlier apostle always described that physical death that somebody has been put to sleep. Because that is not the death that departs us from the presence of God. Even when we die physically, we still stand before God. By our spirit and the Holy Spirit, we still have connection. In Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You see, and so like death, man has been formed. And it was it was lifeless. Until God breathed a breath in man. And man became what? A living soul. So when you, you physically even die, this soul still have a relationship with God. And at the point when judgment shall come, it depends on what you have done with this soul. And that is what will mean that you are either in eternal damnation or you are in eternal life. And this is what Jesus, God saw that, no, my intention for creating man is not for man 
to come and suffer. So there should be a plan to redeem man. You know, after Adam died, uh, Adam died in the garden by disobedience, yeah. according to scriptures in, in Genesis chapter 5, he lived for 930 years. So, so that, losing that right spiritual now. connection doesn't kill the body. The body can still be functioning and go on. 930 years. And when you read that scripture in verse number 3, he produced his kind. He produced his kind. So you have somebody who, has, who is spiritually dead, reproducing spiritually dead people. And Adam lived 130 years in the garden of Eden. And begat a son in his own image and likeness. And called his name Seth. He had departed from the garden. The divine connection that God intended, he has lost it. But the physical body was functional, he was going on. He lived for 930 years, brethren. So, so when we talk about death to a believer, don't only look at somebody who is physically gone. So at the point Adam became Tiasiewu, at a point he was a living dead. He was lived, though he was living, but he was dead. In the presence of God, Adam was dead. Because there was no connection anymore. But God didn't create to kill. He didn't create. God didn't create man to kill man. It was death. That killed Adam, Adam at his own choice. Because the choice were laid before him. The day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. So Adam knew the consequence of his action. So it was Adam who activated death. Yes, the death that the, 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 the sin that came and thrown death. Sin and thrown death. And made death to live like a, like a royal. That everybody seeks to know what to do with death. The Bible said the mysteries of death by one man sin entered into the world. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 12. By one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin. So death was activated because of sin. And sin came about because man was disobedient. So it wasn't man who killed man. But it was sin who activated death to kill man. Hallelujah. Amen. So rebellion in the house of God it's one of the difficult things and dangerous things to do for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law when you give us that scripture Romans chapter 5 let's move on to verse 13 Romans chapter 5 verse number 13 let's read 13 and 14 to close this before we can move on in Romans, Romans chapter 5. Romans, five. Romans chapter 5. Verse 13. From verse 12, 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. The only time sin is activated is when law is applied. That is why prior to that period, people lived and you never heard of sin. 
Enti na ansa na sabra ne ba na ne nipa bi no wo mo tena se ne nso wa anti wo mo bone anti god encountered adam was he saying and we adam. began this journey of sin and its resultant death now what shall see a man in verse number 14 it says nevertheless Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Because between these two people, law was pronounced. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So death was there. Sin was there. But because there was no unestablished law. But it was overlooked. How be it death was there because the very foundation of the world is based on law. Though God has not established clearly that he told Adam when you eat you will die. Like he, he gave law, the laws to Moses. But in between the period, law was existing because the world was not formed on void. So between this period, it was not so pronounced. But when this one said that, is it, uh, what? Uh, sin after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So you don't need to clearly disobey an issue like Adam disobeyed <inaudible> to have committed a sin. And the significance is that who is the figure of him that was to come? Who is to come? Adam was a figure of him who is to come. And he who is to come is Christ. And Christ is law abiding. Christ is coming with redemption. Christ is coming with light. So the expectation of God was that Adam would have been would have been obedient for him to continue his discourse. When Adam became disobedient, Adam became disobedient. So with us, we go back to what then is death? The reasons for us to die. We must be holy. God is holy. God speaks what he wants to be and is what he speaks. God cannot lie. And God is faithful. God does not ignore his words. That is why he told Adam the day you eat, you will surely die. And God being God, he will ensure that Adam will die. It does not make God a wicked person. But the law has already been established. And God has spoken. So the world and its structures will even bring to pass what God has spoken. So, you see, so when you go back to the concept of the court of law that the president is taking us through now, at times when he's trying to explain issues, you realize that issues that has pervaded from generations is still running through the family. Why? Because the perpetrators or careers of those things are spirits. And spirits don't die. The flesh may give up. But beneath the flesh is the spirit. And the spirit don't die. So until somebody comes to a point to accept Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, and for, for the mediation that Christ did to come through, he still lives under that curse and he's still under that. In one of David's worship in Psalm 138, Verse number two, give us some 138, verse number two. Psalm 138 says, You have magnified your word above all your names. He said, I worship 
towards thy holy temple and, and praise, praise thy name for thy loving kindness for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name if we want to literally translate this scripture it means that when God speaks God cannot stop it because God has spoken the word that comes out of the mouth of God has been lifted above God. And so God cannot go back on his word. When God goes back on his word, he's going back on himself. That has magnified thy word above thy name. And so when God speaks, it will take God to avert, revert it. At a certain point of pronouncement by God, it will be very difficult unless something comes in. You have magnified your word above thy name. So if I said the day you eat you will die, that is my word. God, that is my soul. I cannot go back and say, Adam, you are not dying again. Because the word that I have spoken has been magnified above me. So that word must come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why God could not stop Adam from dying. Because he has spoken it already. He has to find a way. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, he said, there is no word that God has spoken that will return void unto him. So shall my word be that God out from my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. So if I said the day you eat, you will surely die, that it will even prosper. And the prosperity is that it goes from generation to generation. It goes. If it's blessing, it goes from generation. If it's a curse, it goes. Because I have spoken, it must accomplish, and it must prosper. So Good Friday is a necessity. Don't let us tell Good Friday that only any ordinary celebration or occasion. It is a turning point for, for man. Something that is in the ocean, the reconciliatory aspect of God's creation. A day in the annals of history when God thought of himself to be of no reputation. So he equal himself with man. Death is a natural result. And fulfillment of God's promise. We gather every day and we pray that the promise of God must come. They are yea. In Christ Jesus and amen. He also promised death. It's part of his promise. He promised Adam. Adam. But on condition that there should be obedience. So there was a clear rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is like the spirit of witchcraft. And cause not the wish to live. You know, at a point like this, judgment takes place. Before death can, you know, when Adam Adam disobeyed, judgment took place. Before death was activated to delink Adam from God, there should be grounds for for that. And that is where judgment takes place. So you see, in, in the courts, when the judge sits. And it's 
attending to issues. There are, there are rules and laws that governs what they do. And at the time, lawyers can argue. But when the judge, the judge sits there, and he looks at what the rules say, what the law says, and he sees that the person you even see to be have offended, he'll set the person free. Lawyer is here. He'll set the person free. That is where you, you take some cases to call. You are expecting that the person must be judged and condemned, but he comes out victorious. The that? judge has his role to play in sentencing. See? So part of the power we gave to death is that we granted death to be something like a judge who must condemn and immediately apply sanctions. So at that we seek for mercy. But mercy is not ignoring justice. If you are asking for mercy, it doesn't mean justice must be closed. Justice must still prevail. But mercy will still have to go on. That is why you and I still have hope. Because in the mercies of God, 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 in applying his judgment, there is a blood that speaks better things. There is a blood. A blood has been shed. And so God promised, God promised Satan that death is one of the means he will use to, to reverse his interference. And in Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, God began a journey. Verse number 15, he said, And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman. The journey of redemption is beginning. I put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her, her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the reason for Good Friday. This is the reason God now a caveat has been put in place that the very woman you used to disrupt my program I will use the same woman and the seed of that woman will bruise your head what is head? authority the authority that you got because Adam disobeyed the seed of the woman will come and when he comes, he will bruise your head and take that authority from you. Because you have bruised the heel of the woman. And, and, and in, in, in my, my references, when I was even coming, I was trying to find an authenticity of that from my wife. That it, when, when kids are born in the midwife, there is a way at times when they want to the, the child to cry, they hold the, the two legs together like this and they lift the child. The response of the child it's either he's crying or not and he tell me whether he has life or not. So the heel over there is a symbol of life that when you try to disturb the life of my creation, they will bruise your head. The authority, the authority with which you want to disturb them when you touch their life, the seed of the woman will bruise your head. Hallelujah. So the enmity between serpent and man, he will crush the head and bruise his heel. So it, it makes clear that the courts of heaven uh, journey we find ourselves in. It is so clear when I was preparing this message. It was so clear when you hear presiding bishop speaking to some of the issues over here. The generation and how at times and after the when the person comes and is speaking then, then they are the otemua for no, the judge judge of all. Now, then he cancels the thing then there is restoration. It is clear. 
Hallelujah. That is it. No, no, no. In in Romans chapter six, verse number eight. I said, now if we are dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dead no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So the death of Christ that we are commemorating and celebrating today, he died to sin, to clean sin to take sin away and sin came because of disobedience of man and sin became a throne for death because without sin there is no death it is sin that activates death hallelujah Amen. Nicodemus went to Jesus in the book of John and was asking the master how do I inherit the kingdom he told him that unless you are born again, the soul has been raptured. The soul is destroyed. So go back and restore your life and take back the soul from where it's been captured. But understanding of Nicodemus, how can I enter into the belly of my, my mother at this age? So salvation which has come to us now through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ is because he, Jesus himself, he tasted of it. Jesus tasted of it. So God could have just commanded but he did not. He said, I will use the same woman and I will go and that woman will, con will conceive me. And because the rest of Adam has been corrupted. My conception shall not be by the usual man and woman affair. But the Holy Spirit, which is pure, will overshadow a woman. And when he conceives me, I will turn my quality as God. I retain because the authority usually when we are doing DNA usually who do we look for it is more that we are looking at who is the father least time you hear who is the mother so the foundation of our existence and conception it is more of a gene from the father so if, if we have been corrupted because Adam disobeyed and if the only way to overcome death is by death the only way a death can be pure will not be when a man conceived in the natural form takes it so the woman will conceive and the seed of the woman will take your authority away from you. Hallelujah. Amen. The seed of the woman will take your authority. In, in Hebrews chapter 2 from verse number let's look at verse number 9 first. Projected Hebrews chapter 2 we we'll read verse number 9, we'll, then we we'll read from 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 9. I said, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor. That he, by the grace of God, should test death for every man. He should test death for every man. The death that has visited man because of disobedience. Christ, Christ, God came through that he will be able to test death. Verse number 14. 
For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh, you and I, we are flesh. And blood. He also himself like two part of the same. So he also came in the form of flesh and man. So the, so the devil cannot have anything against him. God never used his, his superiority as a creator to pull him. But we all have the same time during the extra time. Extra time. So we are looking at who scores the goals. Himself, likewise, took part of the same. That true death, he might destroy him that has power of death, which is the devil. The devil was empowered in the garden when Adam disobeyed. He was empowered. But Christ said, I will come and I will taste of death. I come in the same form of flesh and blood. Like the very man you deceived. I'm coming in the same form like that man. But this time around, I will make sure I overcome you. So you know, the temptation of Jesus, I think Matthew chapter 4, after he has fasted that the devil took him to the hills, it was part of his process. Jesus was not just ordinary tempted, but the devil was finding a way to corrupt him like he did for Adam. He will show him the cities, he show him the wealth. All he has said that if you will bow to me, if you will bow to me, if he had bowed, he would have compromised like Adam did in the garden. Hallelujah. Amen. Likewise, to part the same, that he, through death he might destroy him that has power of death, and that is the devil. That is the devil. Hallelujah. Verse number 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Who through fear of death all their lifetime because waiting upon the Lord when you are looking for the golden strand beyond the river it takes time but you are afraid of death so you compromise in your waiting so you don't even get out of the river let alone to touch the golden strand because death has scared you death is taken away virtues away from you hallelujah amen amen Christ paid for the death of all mankind. So going to hell becomes individual's personal decision. He has paid the price. So if you are not born again today, I'm calling you that a price has been paid for you. The death that is making things difficult. We have the courts of heaven here that explains to you that how generationally you can be tormented and the only way is to take Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. He comes in as a mediator. He comes in as a Messiah. Then he delivers you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse number 56 the Bible said the sin of death is sin and the strength of sin is law. When the time Lord comes to the party, sin emerges. When there is no law, you can be in your house with your children. Things can be where they are. The day you call them and say, this thing, nobody should touch it. The day you tell them, I put something here, nobody should go there. That, but they were there in the house. Nobody has any mind of doing it. So anytime law comes to the party, sin emerges. Hallelujah. Amen. Sin imagine. So we are we are naturally lawless. We are naturally lawless. And he from Adam, Adam's disobedience in the garden. But we thank God that the death that he introduced has come to deliver there. Somebody say amen. And in verse number 50, say, the sin of the law, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory we are looking for has been given in our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Amen. God requires blood. The reason is blood. Blood. 
When I survey the wondrous cross, that is where the blood is. It is because of the blood that is why God came in the form of man because the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 17, 11, it says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for your soul. So in the blood, it is what will bring the redemption. That is why Jesus came. That is why Jesus went to the cross. How be it was not easy for him. In the garden when he was praying, said, Father, Father, if it be my will, let this cup pass over me. In Matthew chapter 26, 39, let this cup over me. When you go to verse number 42, go and said, if it's this cup, will I drink? If it's, give me Matthew chapter uh, 26. Yeah, give me 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse number 42. Two. Okay, uh, from verse number 42, my time. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it's if this cup is not passed away from me, except I drink it, that will be done. Okay. And now because the young couple now fray will know about you. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, yes, Jesus yes. became like you and I. Oh, Where they said we have an honor, and I'm saying, ah, me. If it's this honor that I have to go and pray for my deliverance, then let me go. Uh, That's what Jesus is saying. If this is what, Father, this is why I came. And if this is what I have to go through. At where I'm rich, then let it be. Let it be. Otherwise, I would have fought wrong fight. Let it be. And so Jesus, I, I, I spoke about three ways of dying. In Matthew 27, 46, he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? There has been partition between him and God. Like it happened to Adam in the garden. Why have thou forsaken me? He was dying. Matthew 27, 46. In John chapter 19, verse 28, 29. After this, Jesus said, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I test. And, and when you reach a commentary on this, I test. He sought for water. They tried to give me vinegar using a high soap. And he didn't drink. That's what a medication that Jesus rejected because he is to take our pain. And if he had taken that liquid, he would have been relieved of the pain and we will carry our pain along. So there are some sicknesses you have to tell the devil that Jesus has paid the price. He refused when he said that. He refused. So that he will carry your pain and my pain upon the cross and cross over with it. So you can speak to the devil and say that in Christ, I'm more than a conqueror. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. So today being a good Friday, brethren, Jesus died because of death. Jesus didn't die because he was under compulsion. He died because he must deliver he who has power over death. Today, shall we rise up on our feet? Let's rise up on our feet. If Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior today, you want to open your mouth. He delivered us from the power and who has the power of death, Father. In the name of Jesus, we are in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If today, if Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, a price has been paid for you. Sin has been identified. The consequence of sin has been noted. A price has been paid for you. If you are there and Jesus is not your Lord, can you shoot up your hand? Let's pray for you. There is no day to take Jesus than today. Forever in your life you will remember him. That on a good Friday, I gave my life to Jesus. 
Do we have anyone there like that? Eradisha, come to me. Come. God bless you. We gathered today because of you. Come. God bless you. Do we have anybody coming from there? God bless you. Yamishrao. Let's appreciate him. Let's clap for him. We thank God for today. We give glory to his name. In the name of Jesus. Shall we take our seats? Hallelujah. Amen. Give a communion. We invite the executive pastor to take us through the communion. Hallelujah. On the hills far away stood an old ragged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. First Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 23. Of that cross where the dear and best for the world of lost sinners were slain so I cherish the old ragged cross till my trophies at last I lay down Also, I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Bible says, and I do not owe ye Jesus Christ so am I here no. Of a abode no. Now that's what I Now can say, mon fa muni way any mini pedria wa bubu edi amamo muni way any kaya. What I want you to take notice of. Jesus took the bread himself and he said, this bread is my body. And he was standing there. The bread was just a bread. But he said, this bread is my body broken for you. 
He's teaching us something in faith. You don't need to see to have the physical body of Jesus broken for you. But what you are holding in faith is his body broken for you. If you will eat this one, your body will not be broken again. Father, we thank you, God, that as we take this wafer, let it be the body of Jesus Christ broken for us to give us strength that our bodies will not be broken. In Jesus' name, take it. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sat, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So, once we give thanks, this will become a new covenant. The blood of Jesus replacing the blood of our bloodline so that if there is sicknesses in our bloodline we want this new covenant blood to replace that blood take it in faith father we give thanks let this be your blood jesus of the new covenant that will replace the blood of our bloodline in jesus name sitting down the, the hymn choir is coming to help we're going to spend about 10 minutes praying there must be a benefit for us we can't come to good friday and not receive the reasons and the essence of the good friday it shouldn't be normal church service we're going to spend 10 to 15 minutes praying. I want the hymn choir to come so that we're using the hymn choir, the hymn to be praying, and then we'll look at certain scripture. Can you put Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, and the amplified version? Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, and the amplified version. And church, listen to me. We're going to Stand on the word. When the preacher man preached, he said, God has elevated his word. And one of the things that bring answers to prayer is when your prayer is based on the word. So, when you know, radia semino, so, or say, what picture na semino, what crown na semino, so, when you know, radia semino, so, he watches over his word to perform. That is the secret to answered prayer. And yes, sir, your bomb, and then you will And listen to this having cancelled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note bond with its legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us, hostile to us. This note with its regulations, decrees and demands, he set aside and cleared completely out of the way by nailing it to his cross. Let's start again. Bible said, on the cross, he cancelled what the blood did for us. T. One, a cancel. 
But who can still idea? Sometimes you can still see it. But he canceled it and blotted out. Who blotted out there? What paper? And the devil cannot even see it. He canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note. Sa handwriting, no? And in a bondage, and in an idea, we are bondage, you with its legal decrees, because yet an animal and a coy, a car bosom, no, so and one can say, Boy, listen, Boy, number four, and ye, those days it was farming. Help me that my crops will be better, help me that my cocoa farm will be better. And then they say, okay, we will help you. Don't pay anything. When your children come, they will pay. It means they have mortgaged the wealth of your children. Because at that time, they will help you, but they say, don't pay anything. When your children come, they will pay. They have mortgaged the wealth of the children. And who by your Juman Sikano? Won't you see it? Why you want she? If you want she, want just a persua. Or so the entire it looked like a good. It was a good kind of contract. Our grandfathers had those good kind of contracts, but the devil is smarter. And because of that bond, there was a legal decree. Until until the judge comes to cancel it. It will still follow you. Sometimes it is not about your wealth. Sometimes it's about marriage. Sometimes it's about children. But this morning, we're going to base on the word of God. So that any decree, anything that is in force against us, against our business, you start the business, it's, 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 it's blooming. Then all of a sudden something happened and it comes down. There was a legal bond on that. And it is only the blood that can cancel and blot it out. So that all with his regulations decrees, he can set aside and, and get them cleared. Let's finish. Completely out of the way. And Bible says that he nailed them on the cross. And that's why Bible says on the cross he carried our griefs, our sorrows. He carried all our pains. Bible says, I send you a Thank you for listening. If you need to speak with any of our pastors for counseling, please call any of our pastoral helplines on 0263-177-957 or 0277-432-073. You can also contact our pastoral team on these helplines 0244-170-657. 0244-672-036 or 0277-453-223 and 0263-137-957. May God richly bless you. Please join our online servers on Sundays at 8 a.m. We encourage you to give as the Spirit leads. You can give using any of the following platforms. Koba, star 365 star 22 hash or MTN Mobile Money on 0595 849 